Do wives see sex as a chore or pleasure? What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman here with another segment of A Scary to Be Merry, wanting you to love fearlessly. This topic is very controversial, but I think it's worth discussing. Uh, I posted this on a YouTube, not not a YouTube, a Facebook group about a couple of days ago, and it went crazy, had over 400 something comments. And I wanted to just do my research on this topic. And of course, from the feedback that I got from the people on Facebook from the marriage group, I thought that this was worth discussing in detail and people want to see what I have to say about this topic as well. I know you're wondering, Sean, you're not a woman. So why are you talking about this? I'm coming from the scope of if I'm talking to another man from doing my homework and all the study that I put in and even talking to women. And over the years, I've noticed that a lot of wives use the term sex and chore. They, they kind of, they use them like together. They say, you know, sex is more of a chore opposed to pleasure. And I kept hearing that. So I said, let me go in depth and discuss this topic. And of course, with my study, you know, I love psychology today. And they say that research indicates that 40 to 50 percent of women suffer from a sexual disorder, mostly low libido. And a lot of times we hear this when people are talking about this topic about low libido, low libido. But I wanted to talk about that in detail and the low libido and what's what's what are its causes? What's causing this low libido? So I went to mayoclinic.org. And during my research, they said there's different factors. You might know some of them. One of them is physical, and that's medical diseases, medications, and lifestyle habits. The other one is hormone changes, whether that's menopause, pregnancy, and breastfeeding. And then another one is psychological. Anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, history of sexual abuse, previous negative sexual experiences. And we'll talk about that in depth a little more. Another one is relationship. This is lack of communication with your partner, unresolved conflict or fights, poor communication of sexual needs and preferences, and trust issues. Now, when I seen that, when I seen the poor communication of sexual needs and preferences, it's interesting how in order for us to sell something in culture, we use sex. We use sex to sell toothpaste. We use sex to sell cars, everything, because it's appealing, uh, especially to men, right? But when it comes to our relationships, we don't take that necessary time to discuss the things that we like or the things that we dislike. And a lot of times that communication bridge is usually uh, severed because we're not having a conversation. Like we'll have sex, but we're not talking about it. And I think when it comes to the, like they said, the poor communication of sexual needs and preferences, it can cause a lot of frustration in a relationship, but it goes, it's, it's, the, it's the elephant in the room and no one talks about it because it makes us feel uncomfortable. But I think it's something that can help our relationship because communication is key. Psychology Today also states that individuals who were taxed at too young an age or uh, parent, parentified, I guess it's parenting, parentified, and their families of origin may have less to give than others. And this is why understanding birthing order is important to ask. Um, and, and I think the last part was mine, where I said the birthing order is important because usually if you are the firstborn, you have a lot of responsibilities because you're almost like the little man or the little woman at a house because you might have other siblings and then you got to help mom, or especially if you're in a single parent home, no knock against single parents, but a lot of times when you are the firstborn, you have that much more responsibility. So like they were saying in psychology today, you might've been taxed at an early age or parentified 
um, when you really don't get a chance to enjoy your childhood because you're too busy <laughs> raising uh, your brothers and sisters um, in the house. So I thought that that was interesting. Uh, the sad thing is this, a lot of times we have crazy sex before marriage, right? Like we're getting it in all the time. But then after marriage, sex become a chore. And I wonder why. And this isn't to blame women. This isn't to blame men. This is something that I believe that if we work collectively, I think we can make the necessary changes again through good communication. Because sometimes I do believe that, you know, whatever you did to get that person you have to do to keep them that's that's what you you know you bought her flowers all the time you was always considerate you was always opening her car door uh you always prioritize her then after you got married it kind of trailed off because you kind of took him for granted right and then all of a sudden with the man with the woman you giving them crazy sex y'all having sex all the time but then you get married and then all of a sudden it just trails off because you know he isn't going anywhere. So it's like, uh, you know, I kind of give it to him when I get a chance to. Uh, but you can't have the attitude in marriage. And the thing is with marriage, you have to be proactive every day. You have to be intentional. And a healthy marriage takes work. And there's nothing wrong with putting the necessary work in because we put our best foot forward with anything else that we want to achieve or anything else that we want to be better at, uh, we always put our best foot forward. But when it comes to our marriages, our marriage suffers. Here's another one that can cause sex to be a chore. And that's bad physical health or being overweight and eating uh, poorly and not exercising can really do damage on you uh physically and then you just not having really the strength and you know the the energy to want to have sex regularly um because you, you're feeling lethargic especially with the things that you might eat i realize as i've gotten older that they people will say you know you are what you eat but now i realize how important that is that i have to be more careful and mindful about what i eat and a lot of times, you know, when you're heavier, you just don't have that energy to do this and that, you know, you just kind of more of lethargic. And even with men, and, and we're talking about women today, but even with men, you know, you might have uh, a, a bad blood flow down there, you know, and a lot of times you got to get the moving. You don't have to go running a marathon or whatever. You could just start something easy by walking. And just by making some few changes that you can get your health under control. Then also taking care of your mental health is vital. So you won't have to struggle with depression and anxiety. I tell people a lot of times, a lot of times that you can't pour from an empty cup. A lot of times I, I get it with women and moms and how important it is for you to prioritize your kids, your family, but if you're not healthy, then we're going to need you around. You know, we're going to need you around mentally. We're going to need you around physically, the kids, uh, the, the spouse. I think that's very important. So taking care of your physical health and mental health is vital in um, keeping the, the, the sex life fresh and then for your overall well-being. And then the last topic I want to address is past sexual trauma or bad experiences. The thing is, a lot of times when women are younger and they have sex, they have sex with a lot of times with people their age, they're possibly younger. And most young guys don't know what it takes to please a woman sexually. So he's just doing what he wants to do just to get his. Her on the other end, she don't know what it takes to be pleased sexually. So you're basically just doing this for him. And then you have to learn as you go through sexual experiences. So he's not concerned about you getting yours. And uh, you, you learn this over time that it's more of about just him and not you. And that can really damage a marriage later on because, and I, and I talked about this before, where if we're not careful, that we can take that into our marriage and we have to be mindful that as a husband, you want to make sure that she's taken care of and you don't want 
her past to interfere with the marriage. But past sexual trauma and bad sexual experiences can damage a marriage if you aren't uh, if you if you aren't careful. And this is why I think it's important that you really don't have you know too much sex or you know too many experiences because a lot of times that comes in comparison and a lot of times they can be duds and uh you know your mind you start thinking about sex a different way because you've had these bad experiences um or the bad trauma and this isn't to take away from your experience because i understand that this could be triggering to some so i don't want to take away from your experience but I just want to look at, especially the bad experiences. I think it's important that when you get married, that you have to be more mindful and not bring all of those past triggering experiences into your bedroom. Now, just to end this, know that your physical health, your mental health, um, and having a community, I think also with other women who might understand where you're coming from is very important. And I think that women do pretty good for the most part as far as having their own community that's going to help them. But I did this video in mind of thinking of other men who might be struggling in this area. Um, I think sex should be pleasurable, especially within the confines of marriage that we're looking out for each other and that she doesn't always have to feel pressured to have sex, uh, especially when it comes to marriage. It should be something that we are mutually agreed upon. Now, sometimes there has to be sacrifices because one person has a higher sex drive than the other one. So I get it. But at the same time, we should always have our uh, spouse um in our best interest, especially when it comes to the bedroom, because if it's not right in the bedroom, it's going to affect everything else. Let me know what you think. I've talked about this on Facebook. Leave a comment below and let me know that you look at sex as more of a chore or is it something that's pleasurable for you? Leave a comment below. Share this video with someone that might be in need, especially if you agree with what I said. Make sure that you share, or even if you don't agree with what I said, make sure you share this video with a friend. And if you aren't watching, be sure to listen on Apple Podcasts or any other streaming platforms where you find podcasts. This is Sean Heineman at It's Scary to Be Married. Wanting you to love fearlessly. Take care, people.